is a beautiful Tuesday night here in Kaleida at St. Michael Holy Name Ballpark. And we are ready for Putnam County League Baseball here on WOSN as Kaleida entertains Columbus Grove. My name's Todd Walker along with Mark Shine. We'll bring you the action tonight. Could not be better for baseball. 72 degrees, it's mostly sunny, and we are ready for a good old PCL showdown here between Grove and Kaleida. And adding to the pleasure, the beautiful St. Michael Holy Name Ballpark, of course, recently renovated, mostly done. Um, all the inside that you see on camera is done. Some of the outside work will be finished in the next year or so. Let's take a look at the lineup. Columbus Grove will run out against Kalina's Jackson Hoffman. Brady Basinger leads off. He'll pitch. Kyle Hopkins at shortstop, bats second. Caleb Davis, the catcher, bats third. Evan Sauter in left field is the cleanup man. Jacob Rickard, second base, bats fifth. Trenton Weinkoop, the DH, bats sixth. Everett Palti at first base, bats seventh. Carter Flores at third base, bats eighth. And Devin Bart in right field, bats ninth. Aiden Patrick will be in center field for Columbus Grove and not bat. The Bulldogs are six and nine, one and two in the PCL. Kaleida, four and 10, one and two in the Putnam County League. And the coach Chad Ernsberger of Kaleida told me they've just had a lot of games that youth cost them timely or untimely in their case errors and just sort of losing their composure against some of the better teams on their schedule has caused them some problems but he hopes this team will keep maturing as the season goes on and be ready to make some kind of noise in the tournament and stepping in to lead things off for columbus grove is brady basinger and we are about to get underway damon coverman behind the plate ron black on the bases those are the guys making all the calls our umpires here this evening. Basinger steps in, leads the team with three doubles and a home run plus seven RBI on the season. Pitcher versus pitcher and off-speed pitch is swung on and missed and we are underway here at Holy Name Ballpark in Kaleida. Jackson Huffman really needs to keep people off base. Columbus Grove is 41 of 45 in stolen bases this year. There's ball one. Yeah, they have three players with six or more steals led by Kyle Hopkins, who has 10 and 11 attempts. As a team, they've stolen a 91% success ratio. That's not bad. Here's That's not a bad. ball pulled foul. Kaleida defensively at first base is Griffin Clousing. Second base is Bubba Smith. Shortstop is Nathan Colley. Third base is Adam Bachrath. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and another foul. Outfield left to right is Logan Kerner, Caden Lozier, and Jacob Siebenek. Behind the plate for Kaleida is Ethan Weary. One ball, two strikes, and the leadoff man, Brady Basinger, for Columbus Grove, trying to get something going. And he just got a piece of that one and spoiled it back to the bricks here at Holy Name Ballpark. No fence here. That's all netting behind the plate except for the bottom half which is obviously brick beautiful ballpark great work they did here turf infield grass outfield that off speed fooled him and a strikeout recorded by Jackson Hoffman to start the game and basically made him work for it Mark but a steady diet of breaking balls yeah it was all breaking balls you're right that was a swinging strike on a breaking ball through six pitches and again all of them were breaking balls I was talking to some of the employees here, Todd. They think by the time they're done, it'll be about a $2 million renovation. Part of that, of course, is the parking lot out front, which is not yet completed. Ball one to Kyle Hopkins for Columbus Grove. Leads the team with 16 hits and 16 runs and the aforementioned 10 stolen bases. Pops this one up straight back behind us. And that landed in Mark Shine's Cadillac. <laughs> Jackson Huffman's 0-1 on the season. He's got a 2.00 ERA. He's walked just two batters in his 14 innings on the mound. He's got 16 strikeouts. He missed there to make it 2-1. Now, well, Kaleida's played 14 games. Columbus Grove has played 15. So they're starting to catch up on some of the games postponed earlier this spring. 2-1 pitch up and in. It's like a fastball there. Now 3-1. And, and therein lies the problem. When well, you're playing so many games per week now, the pitching staffs are really taxed. And Kaleidas is set to play Allen East tomorrow. 3-1 pitch. Strike called. Full count to Kyle Hopkins, the Columbus Grove shortstop. Caleb Davis, the catcher, is on deck. We are in the first inning. 
here in Kaleida on WOSN High School Baseball. Good to have you on board. Here's a pop-up to short center field. And the second baseman racing out wow. makes a nice play. Well done by Kaleida that time by Bubba Smith. The center fielder looked like he didn't read it just right and then kind of stumbled as he raced in Lozier, but Smith had a beat on it all the way. And that's out number two. That's a very nice play by Bubba. But what wind we have was pushing the ball away from him, plus looking up into the sun. That was a very difficult play, but well done. So two up, two down. Here's Caleb Davis, the Grove backstop. He takes a strike on the inside corner. So Jackson Huffman trying to make it a one, two, three first inning here. Davis with other ideas, of course. And he shoots one through the hole right side. Base hit the other way for Caleb Davis. So no one, two, three inning for Huffman. Now he'll face the cleanup man, Evan Sauter. He is tied with Hopkins for the team lead with 16 hits. He also has the team's only triple and has the best batting average on the club at 356. Davis is four for four in the stolen base category. First pitch to Sauter is downstairs. One ball, no strikes. Of course, there are two Sauters on the team, Riley the junior, Evan the senior. One ball and nothing. Foul tip into the mitt, strike two. Of course, Braden Sauter is the head coach of the Bulldogs. And the elder Sauter just went back to Ada to coach hoops, Chris Sauter. Swing and a miss on a fastball, one and two. I'm trying to remember which of the Sauters is it the one that's the really good official. Well, he is the good one right now. He's got a younger brother who's coming okay. up through the ranks. That yeah. is correct. There's a ball spoiled down the right side, just protecting the plate, and nearly bought himself a bloop double, but it's foul. Excellent description, Todd. He did just spoil it, fooled somewhat, just to slap it out of play. Tell you what, it's good to see young guys that could really play that still are in their athletic prime years, like the Sauters we were just talking about, get into officiating especially in hoops. I've, I've got a lot of thoughts on that, Todd, and we can kind of share those throughout the game. One-two pitch. Shot to right, could be trouble. Siebenek on the run, won't get it. It drops in, and he returns it quickly with a good throw, and it's a single for Sauter, a little bloop job into right. And that brings up Jacob Ricker, two outs, two on. Ricker will try to put something on the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken scoreboard here in the first inning. Jacob Bricker, sophomore, second baseman. Has five RBIs on the season. We'd like to add to that right here, get his team on top early. And now stepping off is Jackson Huffman, the pitcher for Kaleida. Jacob Bricker, 211 hitter. Big spot here. And he might come through, line drive, bounces into the right fielder, Siebenek. That was hit so hard, they can't score the runner from second. And I'll tell you what, you don't notice that in the box score, Mark, but as a former coach yourself, that was textbook fundamental outfield cutoff. He, he did, but right to the first baseman, give him the option of, of obviously throwing home if it's necessary, going back to third if the runner's rounded the bag too far, but all three shots to right field here. Yeah, all of them going the other way, almost yep. like they're coached, probably. Here's Winecoop. Base is loaded, nobody out for the only southpaw swinger in the Columbus Grove lineup. Wine Coop, the designated hitter. Base is full of Bulldogs, two outs, top of the first, no score yet. Wine Coop leads the team with seven RBI. He could add a ton of them right here. He tries to shoot it the other way, foul. Boy, they're taking everything out the opposite barrel, aren't they? Well, a lot of pitches are on the outside part of the plate and they are going with it. Right there, that he was in a one and one, trying to punch that one in the left field. Wine Coop awaiting the pitch from Jackson Hoffman. Big spot here in the first inning. That was another slow one. He hit opposite way foul. And again, they're staying away. They're hitting it away. Yeah. So. yeah, another breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. The outfield is really playing shallow. Yeah, I noticed that. I was just going to say, they've really moved in here. Yeah. Of course, the one bloop fell in front of them, so did a line drive. So, Jackson Hoffman trying to end this uprising right here. Ground ball to short. Tough play in the hole. Collie, and he can't make it. 
And it looks like two runs are going to score. The throw to the plate, not in time. 2 nothing, Columbus Grove. And they're in what Coach Erzberger oh, talked about yeah. in your pregame to you. Yeah, I would think we got to score that just a straight error. And kind that, of a tough play. It but, was. Yeah. That, that's an opportunity, though, to make a play to third, perhaps, because the bases were loaded. He had a force there. He had a force at second. Yeah. Maybe just kind of got him in a bit of a hurry instead of just making the easier play. So with two outs, here's Everett Palti trying to keep it going. It's 2 nothing Columbus Grove. Ball outside. I'm just going to score that a straight error for now. We don't always have the best angle, but it's my educated guess at the moment. I looked at the scoreboard, but the sun is so bright off of it right now, I couldn't read whether it was hit or air on the scoreboard. Well, so. I don't think they're doing that. The kids are running the scoreboard. I don't think they've got oh. the gumption to put up hits and errors. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they're not making that decision. Two balls and nothing. Needs a strike and got it. Halty, the first baseman, batting in the number seven spot here. That was the 27th pitch of the inning. Yeah, talking about getting to the bullpen mm -hmm. early here. Everett Paulty, six RBI on the season. Takes that one inside, three and one. And, you know, even if you score that a, a base hit, that previous play, that, that's a play that could be made. And that's exactly yeah. what Coach Ernstberger was talking about. Those key, like one or two plays a game have really hurt this club. Here's a wild pitch on ball four. So that'll not really matter. Not technically a wild pitch. And it reloads the bases for Carter Flores. And the Bulldogs are scratching and clawing here in the first inning, already up 2 0. And we're going to get a mound visit here. 2 0 on the Least Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Least Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapakoneta, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. And uh, Mark, speaking of graduation parties and catering, uh, how many is on your schedule? <laughs> I, I take my shoes off and start counting <laughs> to do that. It's getting to be that time yeah. of year. You, you know, Todd, you talked about a fish egg a little while ago. Yeah. So you're 20, 19, 20, whatever. Maybe you're going to college. Yeah. Why not officiate middle school basketball, JV basketball on, on a Tuesday night? Right. Make, make 60 bucks, run up down the court a little bit, be a part of the game. I, I think there are so many opportunities. You rather deliver pizzas on Friday right. night or, no, or do something like absolutely. that? Right? Helps you stay in shape too and stay close to the game. And be There's a part a of the game, yeah. Swinging attempted check swing. Strike one to Carter Flores, the third baseman for Columbus Grove. Big inning already for Grove. They've scored two. They've reloaded the bases here. All of it with two outs. Flores Big sends hit. it right back to the box. Taken in behind second, throw to first, there's nobody there. Bubba Smith threw it to first and nobody was home. And Grove's gonna add two more runs. Well, Check Smith, it, one more run. Smith oh, had, it was two, yeah. It was, it's Smith four had nothing gone to, uh, come to be the cutoff man. Yeah. He thought the ball was gonna get through to center field and when it didn't, then uh, he, he, the throw was made to first, he wasn't there. Yeah, there are two runs score. Flores moves on to second base as does everybody else on the error, moved up a base. Palti now at third with two outs, and Barnt is the ninth batter in a disastrous inning for Kaleida. It's 4 nothing Grove. There's a ball down in the dirt. And the sad thing is, I think if there was a first baseman, he might have got it. He might have got it. It was, was a really that? good yeah. throw, yeah. That's why it caught me off guard when he threw it. I naturally assumed somebody was at first base, and I looked over there, and nope, nobody home. There's a fly ball to center, going back on that center fielder, over Lozier's head. That's going to drive in two, a long single for Devin Barnt, and it is six nothing Columbus Grove. My goodness. And, and all this with two outs, Todd. Boy, that could not be a worse inning for Kaleida. And we go back to the top of the order. So they've batted around. And now then some. Batter number 10 is Brady Basinger. He started this with a strikeout. There the runner goes. Strike called. Throw down. It bounces in. And they can't field it cleanly. A stolen base for Devin Barnt. Not a bad throw at all by Weary. No. But this shortstop Collie had to try and field it on the hop. Get a tag down. Couldn't do it. Barnt now 8 for 8 on the season. Stolen base by the 9 for 9. as He corralled that one. 
No, eight for eight, obviously. Eight for eight. Six run inning already for Columbus Grove. This could make it seven. It's deep to center field going back and making the grab wow. on the run is Lozier. Caden Lozier ends a nightmare inning for Kaleida with a fine running catch in dead center field. However, Columbus Grove, six runs in the inning, aided greatly by two Kaleida errors. They leave one man on base. After a half inning on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, it's Columbus Grove six, Kaleida coming to bat. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Bottom of the first here on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard and Kaleida already with some work to do down six nothing. Here's their lineup for Coach Ernstberger. Bubba Smith at second base bats first. Caden Lozier in center field bats second. Adam Bachrath at third base batting third. Right fielder Jacob Siebenek, the cleanup man. Ethan Weary catches and bats fifth. Griffin Klausing at first base bats sixth. Jack Steckschulde, the DH, bats seventh. Jackson Hoffman, the pitcher, is batting eighth. Batting ninth, shortstop Nathan Colley. Logan Kerner plays in left field but will not bat for Kaleida. Here is Bubba Smith. His mother named him Braylon, if you're wondering. Apparently prefers Bubba. Takes a strike. So we'll go with that the rest of the game. Brady Basinger, 23 and two-thirds innings. His ERA is 1.18. He's got 24 strikeouts. So just about one per inning, giving up just 10 hits. He is one and two on the season. I talked to Coach Sauter about his repertoire. I said, what's he use for a breaking ball? He said, I don't know if we got time to talk about all that. Well, he said slider, curveball, yeah. changeup, knuckleball. I was like, that, that seems like enough. One ball, one strike to Bubba Smith. And he rips it to left, and that's a base hit. So, well, they say you can't eat an elephant in one bite, right, Mark? If you're going to come back from 6 nothing, you got to start somewhere. And Bubba Smith starts with a single. Well, and Kaleida's averaging under four runs per game on the season, so they have a really monumental challenge ahead of them here. Here's our left-handed hitter coming in with Lozier. Lozier will provide the only lefty-lefty matchup of the day with this configuration. The center fielder made a fine running catch to end that first inning. Grove might still be batting. There's a nice breaking ball in the outside corner. Strike one. But down 6-0, you don't know whether you want to run the bases with any taking chances or not. Bubba Smith is 8 of 9 stolen base-wise, leads the club. He's got half of their steals on the season. He's getting a big lead over there. Off speed, caught the inside corner. Snapped that one off. Boy, he sure did. Nice breaking ball from Brady Basinger. 6-0 Grove with the lead as we play in the bottom of the first here at Holy Name Ballpark in Kaleida. Bubba Smith going, swing and a miss. That's a strikeout. Head first slide, and Bubba's got steal number nine. And he's in scoring position with one out for Adam Buckrath. Buckrath, the third baseman. 321 batting average. This Kaleida club. Looking to claw their way back in this Putnam County League affair with Columbus Grove. Pitch inside, nearly hit him. One ball and nothing to Buckrath. Tried to catch the inside corner with that breaking ball. Got it too far inside under the fist. 1-0 pitch coming here from Basinger. Looks at second. That ball's fouled back. Adam Buckrath, a freshman. Again, that's indicative of this Kaleida team, a lot of youth. But certainly these guys are going to learn from this season. They've taken some lumps. They've lost some close games to good teams. They've had a few blowout losses, but a lot of really tight games, strike called. And some of their self-inflicted wounds have proven to be fatal in some of those games. Look at it. Lipsick at 3-0, Miller City at 3-1, Ottoville 2-1 on the top of the conference heading into tonight's action. Unfortunately, both these squads looking up at that group of teams in the PCL standings. There's a ball down and in. Bubba Smith, quick break, throw down to third, not in time. Wild pitch. And there you see Bubba Smith, great instincts, a great read of that ball down on the turf. Yeah, it didn't get that far away from the catcher, Davis. It heads up. Uh, Opportunity and good speed to get to third base. And that's all about that secondary lead. 2-2 two -two pitch outside, full count. And that to a degree is something that's even hard to coach. You almost just have a knack for it. 
being able to get that secondary read uh, lead and make a good read on the ball. Bubba Smith certainly a heads up play. Full count to Buckrath. I missed, he walked him. Tried to snap it off and catch the outside part of the plate. So I bring up Siebenek, the right fielder, Jacob Siebenek. Of course, Coach Souter wants to get out of this inning and get some, keep that momentum going, not get uh, Kaleida back into it at all. That's right. Even one run for Kaleida yep. feels like, okay, we can, we can knock this down as we go. And at the corners, one out. And Siebenek takes a ball outside. Bachrath is one for one in stolen base opportunities this year. Siebenek is the cleanup man, the right fielder. Leads a team of four doubles. Here's a pitch hit hard. The hole at shortstop. Backhanded by Hopkins. Throw to second. Oh, he got nice the play. force out. Yes. Whale of a play by the shortstop, Kyle Hopkins. A run scores on the ground out. That makes it 6-1, to one. so Siebenek gets the RBI. But uh, Bachrath's put out 6-4. to four. And you know what, Mark, that kind of leads us back to the play. A similar hit ball, the play Kaleida yeah. did not make in the top of the first that opened the gates for a six-run inning. Absolutely. They might have got out of the inning. Certainly if he just keeps the ball in the play, give one run perhaps, uh, two, and then can open the floodgates. But uh, that's correct. So here's Ethan Weary, the catcher. Two outs, a man at first, takes one upstairs. 6-1 Columbus Grove with the lead. Bulldogs with a six-run first inning. Kaleida trying to claw their way back into it. At least start to here in the bottom of the first. That one just missed. Fastball low. Should have the, uh, will have the boys tournament draw this weekend. This weekend already, how about yeah. that? Two balls and nothing. Strike on the outside corner. Softball draw was last Sunday. Before you know it, everybody will be in Akron. Softball and baseball both have their state tournaments in Akron. 2-1 pitch. Tried to take that high fastball the other way, but fouled it off. Will you be a part of that action in Akron this spring? I believe I will be part of the OHSA radio network for the baseball tournament call. It's always a good time. Bring in a lot of great broadcasters and myself, guys like Tim Alcorn and also got uh, Marty Bannister. There's a chopper foul at the plate, among others. Rushi Raiders back for the third time, baby. But we're getting used to seeing them, man. <laughs> we are, aren't we? Now, they're not quite as uh, the regular season record, not quite where it has been over the last yeah. few years. But when tournament time rolls around, you're right. You don't want to count them out. And, of course, this will be the last year for the four divisions, yeah. just like it was for hoops. And it'll change the dynamic of the state tournament next year for all of those sports. Two balls, two strikes on Ethan Weary. Runner at first, two out. Checked his swing. He did not. Nope. Damon Coverman rings him up. But Kalina at least starts to try to come back here. They get a run on a hit and a walk and a ground out. After one... Here in Kaleida, it is 6-1 Columbus Grove on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard on WOSN. Top of the second inning here at Holy Name Ballpark in Kaleida. Todd Walker, Mark Schein with you. The Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard says 6-1 Columbus Grove. They scored six in the top of the first. Kaleida started what they hope will be a comeback with a single run. And now it's up to Jackson Hoffman to keep him here and pitch as long as he can. Jackson threw 34 pitches in the opening inning, 23 for strikes. Kyle Hopkins, first pitch to him is a ball. Hopkins hit a pop fly to short center field that the second baseman Bubba Smith made a nice play on in the outfield for out number two. Strike called, evens the count. And at that time, everything looked hunky-dory for Kaleida. I mean, two up, two down, nothing to worry about. And a couple of not really hard hit balls and a play that could have been made that wasn't. And next thing you know, you throw in a walk and another error and a couple of hits, and it's a six-run inning. 
Starting with Caleb Davis, three consecutive singles to right field, opposite way, and as you said, the floodgates open. There's a big cut and a miss by Hopkins. Two balls, two strikes. The signs on the wall here say 356 to center field, 359 to right center, 309 down the right field line, 303 down the left field line. Oh, and company and he hits him. So Hopkins will take his base. And you know, I like that. A little bit of quirkiness in the outfield wall. It's not it's not Fenway or anything, but you know. <laughs> yeah, all the, the symmetric ballparks that we're used yeah. to. And it is nice to see something like that. I just saw. Plus, we got the wall out here in right, uh, yeah. right down the right field line as the well. The maroon monster, I guess. <laughs> Although, looks to be maybe a third as high as the green monster in, at Fenway. But nonetheless, a nice look down the right field line. Caleb Davis steps in. He started that six-run uprising with a single, with two outs and nobody on. There's a nice stop by Weary behind the plate. A ball that bounced in there. Dogs up 6-1. They're looking to even their PCL mark at 2-2. Two and two And push their overall record to 7-9. and nine. Breaking ball strike. Big breaking ball. Collided defensively. First base is Palti, Everett Palti. Here's the off-speed pitch. Shot the other way again. Boy, they keep doing that. Runner makes the big turn here. Sebenak with the gun to third, and they got him. Big time throw by Jacob Sebenak to knock off Kyle Hopkins trying to take it from first to third. You know, I think that's one of those, they've got the artificial infield, and I think he started his slide and almost stuck in the ground. Yep. He, he stuck on that and didn't get to the base. I agree with you, Mark. It was like uh, the old major league where he <laughs> he slid and came yeah. up short. Come on. But you're right. I think when you don't play on the turf a lot, you kind of misjudge how you can slide. Here's Evan Sauter now with one out. Toward the hole left <laughs> side and through for a hit. Davis, Sauter, both going two for two so far. Well, you got to really give a lot of credit to this Columbus Grove lineup and Coach Sauter's, I guess, tutelage here. They're not over swinging. They're really concentrating on making contact. They hit the ball the other way a lot tonight, and they are hitting the ball where they ain't, so to speak. Jacob Ricker now bats with two on and one out. Already six to one, Columbus Grove with the lead. Jackson Hoffman down and in. So Kaleida trying to hang in here, and Hoffman wants a shutout inning in the worst way. He got an outfield assist to give him a better shot at it. Well, in the midst of that, we kind of didn't look at how good the throw was from Sebenak. Oh, that was a nice peg from yeah. right field. Well, he showed a nice arm a couple of times in that first inning on when he hit the cutoff man on the one and threw it back into the infield on another play, the one to bloop down the line. So not a fluke. 1-0 pitch. 2-0. Whipped down the first and diving back in for Columbus Grove. You no, know, actually, Bob, when you let that it. throw go from right field, I'm thinking, oh, he throw it into second base and don't, you know, don't let that runner move right. up. He, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing about that from the right field position is you see it. It's yeah. in front of you. Two and oh. Two and one. Yeah, that's one of those plays as an outfielder, as uh, the defender, when you can see all the elements of the play in front of you, a lot easier to make that calculated gamble. 2-1 pitch, chopped foul toward third. Well, I tell you what, could we have ordered a better day? Uh, I mean, yesterday, some rain late in the evening. Uh, cut a few games short last night after five or six innings. Then it rained pretty hard overnight. Still some puddles around town here, but ballparks be looking great. Ball three. Three and two now. Yeah, that, that the guy you talked to in the morning, Llewellyn. Yeah, Retro you, Llewellyn. Yeah, yeah. You got to get that guy to do some more of these. Yeah, <laughs> we want all these. <laughs> None of that other stuff. Full count. Runners at first and second, and one out for Columbus Grove. Inside, didn't hit him. Doesn't matter. Still ball four. And that'll load the bases. And boy, you wonder just how long 
Kalida can stick with Jackson Hoffman, who is laboring a bit here. Second walk in the game. He's hit a man. He's walked two. He's given up seven hits. His team's made a couple of errors. It's just all going wrong. And here's Trenton Weinkoop. His ground ball to short was misplayed for two runs, and that began things as far as scoring is concerned. Last inning. Ball one to Weinkoop. That was the 50th pitch of the game so far. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Hoffman, a lot of these have been high leverage, high pressure pitches, and the strain's got to be building on the young sophomore. Just missed that one. Two balls, no strikes to Trenton Weinkoop. Now how big was that throw from right field to third? <laughs> yeah, it would have already been at least one run. Two balls, no strikes. Other way, foul. Kaleida playing the infield in at this point. You're down six to one in the second. You want to make sure you can turn a ground ball into an out at the plate. Ideally, you'd get a double play out of it, but for sure, they want to cut off any more Columbus Grove runs. 2-1 pitch. Oh, he waved at that one. Looked like he was trying to kind of send it the other way, but it opened up his shoulder too far. It's now two balls, two strikes. His teammates have had a lot of success pushing the ball opposite field. He tried to that time. Big pitch here for Hoffman. He missed away. Full count again. <clears throat> well, it would be a huge psychological boost for Kaleida if they could get out of this inning here. Payoff pitch from Hoffman to Weinkoop. Foul straight back. Ryan Coop has Sauter at first. Check it, Ricker at first, Sauter at second. There's a grounder to short. They'll come home, they'll get one there, and that's it. The catcher Weary planted the throw, perhaps, and I think he kind of slipped on the home plate or maybe clipped the foot of the runner or yep. both, but they get the force out, and Everett Palti will bat. So Davis was put out six to two. So now Sauter at third, Ricker at second, Weinkoop at first, Everett Palti batting. Fly ball, center field, shallow, actually blowing onto the infield, and it's caught by the shortstop, Colley, for the out. So Columbus Grove loads the bases, but they do not score in the second. On to the bottom of the second on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, Columbus Grove 6, Kaleida 1 on WOSN. Back here, Kaleida, second inning on tap, the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Columbus Grove 6 and Kaleida 1. Todd Walker and Mark Shine here with you. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Griffin Clousing hopes to start a rally here. Instead, he bounces it to third. Flores will send it across. Bad throw, but they get him. Oh, good play. Took Paldi off the bag. He did a little two-step and got the tag down before Clousing arrived. And that's the first out in the second inning. Jack Stecksholde, the designated hitter, now bats for Kaleida. He leads the team with a 324 batting average. He's driven in four runs. You know how you know I didn't write that Lee's chicken ad? Because it didn't say anything about sweet tea. <laughs> they yeah. do have some outstanding sweet yes, tea if that's your deal. It's uh, very southern, and I can say that. I've got some kin down south, or at least mid-south. Oh, one pitch. Strike two. So Grove has staked Brady Basinger to a big lead, and he's not messing around. Threw 19 pitches back in the first inning, but he's got to Three pitches, all of strikes so far in this inning. That and one they, skips in to clip the batter. It did. It did. So you're just talking about him working in the strike yeah. zone. He hits Stegschulte. Overthrew that one. Yeah, he really snapped that one off and hit by pitch. Sends Stegschulte to first. Now batting number four. Jackson Pitcher Jackson Huffman now steps in. <laughs> and you know Huffman would love to get a rally going with the work he's done on the mound. 
There is a framed strike to Jackson Hoffman. Steck Schulte is four for four in stolen bases over there at first base. It's not a team that runs a lot, just 22 attempts on the season, 16 successful. There is a line drive over second base. That's down for a hit. Steck Schulte makes the big turn at third, then throws on the brakes. They throw behind Ooh. him, almost got him. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, living dangerously there, but he gets back to the bag safely before the tag was applied by Kyle Hopkins. Kind of nonchalanted it back yeah. to the base there and almost cost him. Well, that's why you really got to be looking at your coach for the guidance there because you got to make a decision quickly. And Klausing, or I should say Steckshaw, he kind of got caught in between, but luckily able to get back. Here's Nathan Colley now. Fouls it off. 6-1 Columbus Grove, but Kaleida now with one out, a hit batter and a base hit. They got out, something of, happen. got out of inning number two without giving up a run. Kaleida tries to tack on one or two here and cut the deficit in half, perhaps. Kali hitting 214, the number nine batter in the lineup here. Squares to bunt, pops it up, and lands foul. Stayed up in the air. Davis almost had a chance to get to it. Catcher's position. Kaleida with Hoffman at first. Steckscholdy at second. Collie at the dish. 6-1 Columbus Grove. Kaleida a chance to dent that lead. There's a bouncer to first. Almost caught in the air. The first baseman makes the play. Throws to second. Not in time there. Halty again slipped on the base there. He stepped on the top of the bag and his foot slipped off. So not the best of throws, but he gets the out at first. And there's two outs, two runners in scoring position for Bubba Smith. We've seen it happen a lot today. You wonder if there's something with the home plate and the base is so where people are slipping on the top of them. <coughs> well, maybe the bases are so new and so clean that they're slippery. <laughs> Usually they're covered with years of grime and dirt. Bubba Smith, RBI chance, two out and two on. There's a ball outside. Boy, would a hit be huge here for the Florida Wildcats. No doubt. Bubba Smith, 306 hitter, leads the team in slugging percentage and OPS. Eight RBIs on the season, had hit the first time up. Ball high. That hit was his 16th of the year, which leads the team. And right here, it would be big. Base hit probably would equal two runs. It's uh, two outs here. They'll be off on contact. It's 6-1 Grove. We're in the second inning. 2-0 pitch. All down. 3-1. And, and there you can see good plate discipline by Bubba. He started to... That ball location was there, but it wasn't a fastball, and he let it go, and it's ball three. He was looking for something. See if he gets something like. dead red here to hit. Yes. 3-0. and oh. Ball four. I wouldn't say they pitched around it, but I get the feeling they pitched around it. <laughs> he certainly didn't get any good to hit, did he? No, they did not. Ken Lozier now bats. Second walk. Lozier, 290 batter. Comes Coach Sout of the mound, have a little discussion. Yeah, see, that's the uh, the double-edged sword of the big lead early. You kind of figure a guy with uh, Basinger's repertoire and the way he's pitched, you stake him to a big lead, he can, we can easily ride him for five, maybe six innings without a problem, but this is a pivotal point right here, but the second inning only yet. Base is loaded, two outs, it's six to one. And Coach Sauter wants to make sure everybody's on point. Should we th throw some props out to Coach Satter's dad? Get sure. Back into the coaching business. Yeah. Back to the Ada Bulldogs. Yeah, Chris Sauter, of course, coached at Ada, then went to his alma mater, Grove. Yep. Coached them very well for a while, and he was out of coaching last year. And now he's going back to Ada, who is leaving the NWC for the Blanchard Valley Conference yep. next year. As we have some conference musical chairs going on. All right, Smith at first, Hoffman at second, Stecksholdy at third, two outs, and Caden Lozier at the bat. Struck out his first time up, lefty on lefty. Here's the pitch. Hit hard toward the hole. First baseman, Paldi, 
to the pitcher covering. No, he's safe. Oh, they called him out. Now we got time called. Kaleida wants to appeal to the home plate umpire. I thought he had beat it on the head first slide, but those are hard to judge. They are. Yep. Uh, especially from our distance. It's a huge call here. See if it stands or if it's overruled. <clears throat> oh, oh. We're going to say safe. Yeah. So that would indicate to me that they were talking about did he touch the bag or not, not did he beat the throw, because that would exclusively be the first base umpire's judgment. So that's going to go as an infield hit. Baldy made the play, just didn't have the pitcher to throw it to soon enough. I think I, he I hesitated a little bit. He wanted to throw it. The pitcher wasn't right. there. Well, Palti could not have won the race himself. He had to range too far to his right. So Lozier gets the infield single and an RBI to make it 6-2. And now Adam Bockrath will bat. Chopper left side. Third baseman Flores boots it, and another run will score. So that's just a straight error on Flores there. And it gives Kaleida another run, and it's six to three, and the bases are still loaded. Cut the lead in half, got your cleanup hitter up. Jacob Siebenek, who has an RBI of sorts, he threw a man out on the base paths last inning, pops it up, short right field, blowing into foul territory, and oh, a sliding attempt, but unable to grab it was Bart as he went to the turf near the fence down there. Good effort. By the right fielder, Devin Barnt, he had to come a long way and then negotiate that fence, and he timed his slide well, but he just couldn't match up the glove with the trajectory of the ball, so it's just a eventful strike. Well, you've got the, the winds pushing the ball away from you a little bit. Not that it's a strong wind today. you got the sun you're battling. The fence is right there. And all three of those things kind of came together, and you couldn't make the play. Good That's effort. a fine effort, even though he didn't cleanly field it. 0-1 pitch. Upstairs, and boy, climbing the ladder there was Caleb Davis to save a wild pitch. Kalina has scored twice in the second to make it a deficit of six to three now. One ball, one strike, the pitch. Fouled off. It got a piece of the catcher, Davis. He'll shake it off, or try to anyway. So you want to be a yeah. catcher, huh? Which is why... I Umpire, home plate umpire, Damon Kolovitz, walking to the mound. Yeah. Give him a little chance. Now here comes his coach out to talk to him as well. I would say he rubbed some dirt on it, but you have to pick <laughs> up some rubber pellets instead. <laughs> There's no dirt here, is there? <laughs> bring your own dirt. Put it in your back pocket. So, one ball, two strikes. Just like to watch how veteran officials, umpires, and so on, how they handle football, basketball, baseball games. Right. You know, just little things like that right there. One ball, two strike count to Jacob Siebenek. Bases are loaded. Two out. Basinger kicks and deals. Fly ball, right center field. Right fielder Bart gets there and puts it away. But Kaleida continuing to try to come back. Two runs here in the second inning. A couple of hits, a hit batter, a walk, and a huge error. The Cats leave the bases loaded. After two on the Lee's famous chicken. Scoreboard, 6-3, Columbus Grove on WOSN. Two innings in the books on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard, and it is 6-3, Columbus Grove. Todd Walker and Mark Schein here at Holy Name Ballpark in Kaleida. Big thanks to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's, where home style happens. Big inning for Jackson, Jackson Hoffman. You know, they've got it back to cut the lead to just a, a three. Last inning, he threw uh, 23 pitches, 12 for strikes. That was significantly better. He sold 57 pitches through the game. Starts off with a ball here to Carter Flores. Ball outside. Carter singled in a run and scored in that six-run first inning for Columbus Grove. It's now 6-3 as we play the top of the third. Hoffman pitches and the misses. 3-0 to Flores. 
Flores had a big error last inning that played it a run. 3-0. and oh. Inside and hit him. It has just been a slug for Hoffman today. Yeah. He got out of the last inning, but he left the bases loaded. He's allowed seven hits. He's hit two batters. He's walked two batters. Has just a single strikeout today. Pretty good pinch runner. Yeah, Flora is going to be taken down for the runner. That will be Wyatt Fierst running. So Wyatt Fierst will run at first base. And now batting Devin Bart. Bart, a two run single in that six run first. There's a ball low and outside. First is two for two in stolen bases this year. As we said earlier in the telecast, they were 41 of 45 coming into today where the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. One ball and nothing to the right fielder. There's a throw to first and diving back in is Wyatt Fierst. Six three Grove with that lead on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Up and in, he hits another one. So, first and second, nobody out. And you got to believe that a pitching change is coming pretty well, soon. Well, you hit eight and nine in the order. You know, these are two guys who are at the bottom of the order. Uh, you know, one's hitting 318, one's hitting three, uh, one, one, three. Here comes Coach Ernst. Coach Ernstberger out of the dugout, and that you would think is going to be it, and it is. So rough game for Jackson Hoffman. He gave up six in the first, although they were all unearned. He battled out of the second without giving up any more, but two hit batters here in the third necessitates a change. We will take a break, tell you about the new pitcher. When we come back, Columbus Grove leads at 6-3 on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. It's high school baseball on WOSN. Owen Siebenek comes on to relief for Kaleida. The sophomore right-hander steps into a tough situation. His team down 6-3 in the top of the third. Nobody out, two runners on. We'll get you some of his numbers in a moment with Mark Shine. First, a pitch to Brady Basinger. And a hard ball to short. Weary fields it, flips to second. Can they turn it over? No. But Basinger hits into the fielder's choice. Bart is retired 6-4, so runners on the corners with one out for Kyle Hopkins. Owen Siebenek, eight and two-thirds innings on the season. He's given up 13 hits, six earned runs on the season. So walked six and struck out seven. His record is 0-1. Kyle Hopkins steps in for Grove. Runners at the corners, one out. Bulldogs lead 6-3, but looking to plate some more here. Siebenek on the mound. Owen comes set. Delivers, the hit and run was on, and the foul ball back. But it looked like Brady Basinger had that stolen. Yeah. And a heck of a jump there. But he'll have to go back to first. Hopkins, as we said earlier, entering this game, leading the team with seven RBI, 16 hits, three doubles, and 16 runs, and 10 steals. All of those team-leading numbers coming into the game. Nothing and one to the Grove shortstop. Kaleida again with the infield in. Runner goes, strike called. They throw to the pitcher, not down to second. So a stolen base for Basinger. Puts two runners in scoring position, takes away the double play possibility. A few nights ago, I saw the Reds actually make a play on that. Catcher pump faked the gun to second and caught the guy off third. Really? Yeah. There's a slap to right. Looks playable for Siebenek coming in. He's going to gun it to the plate, and they're not going to test that arm uh, again. We've seen that, haven't we? Tell you what, 
Jacob Siemenek, he's kind of like Dikembe Mutombo, remember? <laughs> Wagging the finger. Gonna, yeah, I don't no, know. no, no. Not going to score on that sack fly, son. So two outs. And that brings up Caleb Davis. And trying to make it a run scoring inning for Grove. And so Owen Siemenek has come on and thus far, so far, so good. A ground out and a fly out. And we'll work on Davis, who's two for two. Missed up high. Grove got six in the first. They've threatened in the second, couldn't score. They're threatening in the third. How will it turn out? We'll find out. 1-0. Missed. 2-0. Caleb Davis singled and scored in the first. Singled and was stranded and actually was thrown out at the plate on the front end of a attempted double play in the second inning. Batting again in the third. Strike one. Good fastball. Runners at second and third, those being Basinger and uh, Fierst, respectively. And just missed off the outside corner, three and one. He's and got again, a base open. First base open, yep. exactly. That leaves you with the cleanup hitter, though, Souter coming up. Yeah, that's, I guess, pick your poison time here. Three and one. Fly ball, center field going back. Lozier over to his left. He's got it. How about Owen Siebenek? He comes in with men on first and second. Nobody out. No problem. The sophomore gets three straight outs to end at the Columbus Grove threat. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two left. On to the bottom of the third on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Columbus Grove 6, Kaleida 3 on WOSN. Bottom of the third inning here in Kaleida. 6-3, Columbus Grove. The Dogs scored six in the first and have threatened in each of the last two innings, but couldn't play add on. So Kaleida trying to continue the comeback. Ethan Weary, first pitch swinging. And by the shortstop, Hopkins. Error on the shortstop. Starts the inning with a base runner for Kaleida. That is the uh, classic let the ball play you. Got kind of caught in between hops. Didn't know whether to come in and get it or not. When the ball took that one last hop and got past his glove. and. Just didn't come charging it like you would expect a good shortstop to do. Yeah, I think the key there is, Mark, you've got to charge that ball. If you sit back, you're going to get caught. Here's Griffin Klausing. Ball outside. Klausing, the first baseman, grounded out to third his first time up. Sophomore. Basinger threw 38 pitches in the first of two innings, 19 in each, 23 of them for strikes. There's a foul back, and boy, Klausing was on that one. But needs to send it the other way for better results. One in the first, two in the second for Kaleida as they continue to try and dig out of this hole here. They made it 6-1 and 6-3, and now batting in the third. It's like a slider there, bends down and in. Two balls and a strike. We talk about Kaleida and some games that they feel like maybe didn't let get away, but certainly could have won. Here's the 2-1 pitch. There's a drive to left field. Could be trouble. Left center, but the left fielder over and then misplays it. Sauter looked like he had a beat on it and didn't make the catch. Throw to third, and he's gone. They knock him off coming into third. Patrick to Hopkins to Flores. They get the out at third base. So the error on the left fielder, and then they recover and get the out at third. Nice relay throw from Hopkins. So one was. out, and Steckschulte bats. Good recovery, Todd. You know, they misplayed the ball in the outfield. It should have been an out. But they're recovered enough to make a good throw. And, and as you said, Hopkins put it right on the money. And nice slap tag by, by Carter Flores to get the out. Well, that's a nice play by the center fielder to come over and pick that up. Because the left fielder running away from the play sure. is going to have a hard time turning around throwing. Otherwise, you're looking at second, third, and nobody out. Now, you still got the man at second, but with yes. one out. Steck Schulte, the batter now. And he's first pitch swinging and fouls it back. 
By the way, we have a runner at first base for Kaleida. That is Parker Vorst at second base, excuse me, running for Klausing. 6-3 Columbus Grove. So each team has recorded an outfield assist here in this game. 0-1 pitch. Outside. One ball, one strike. Steckschulte was hit by a pitch and scored last inning. <laughs> you look at the games that Kaleida kind of let get away from them. That Lipsick game was one that really stings because the Vikings are having a tremendous season. And Kaleida had them on the ropes. They led them 2-1 through 5. But the Vikings got one in the 6th and one in the 7th. And they are currently 14-1 and in the season. Kaleida almost came back themselves, scored one of the seventh, but lost it four to three. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Boy, good breaking ball there um, from that assortment of off-speed stuff from Basinger. He got a big strikeout. Just his third strikeout of the game. And Owen Siebenek, who came in to pitch in relief of Hoffman, is now batting in that spot. Big spot here. He could knock a run in here with two outs. Strike in the outside corner. <coughs> Siebenek came in and got out of a two-out, nobody-on jam in relief of Huffman this top of the third inning. Owen has just one hit in ten plate appearances this year. Foul at the plate. No balls, two strikes. Six three Grove. His one hit had two RBIs attached to it. <laughs> there you so, go. Well, he's got a guy RBI on second. Yep. Spot right here. He's down 0 and 2, however. Ball one, high and outside. And Kaleida got aggressive on the base paths here in the sitting and it ended up costing him. Grove with the nice play and the throw from the outfield at the cutoff man and pegged him at third. One, two is outside. Two, two to Siebenek. Trying to extend the inning here. He will not swing and a miss. So Basinger strikes out the last two batters to turn in a scoreless frame for the first time among the three he's pitched. On to the fourth on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Columbus Grove six and Kaleida three on WOSN. Fourth inning on tap here at Holiday Ballpark in Kaleida. 6-3, Columbus Grove leads on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. Todd Walker and Mark Shine here with you as we hit the fourth inning. You mentioned the good job Siebedek did in the last inning. He threw nine pitches, six of them for strikes, and got out of it. Three outs after he came in with nobody on and a man on first and a man on second. Here's Evan Sauter. He lifts one out of here, foul to left. So the final official line on Jackson Huffman, two plus innings, six runs, seven hits, two walks. He hit two batters. He struck out one, six runs, zero earned. At least by my scorebook keeping, and that could be massaged by those who did it from the dugout, perhaps. Had a better look at that pivotal play there in that inning when the ball hit the shortstop. I just scored it a straight error, but Huffman, a tough day nonetheless. Here's a slow tapper, left side, it rolls foul. Souders two for two today, he's got a run scored. Grove jumped on him for six in the first and have left five men on base since without scoring. So they've had chances to expand the lead, but have been unable to do so as of yet. Owen Semenek aiming to keep it that way. He's ahead 0-2. Oh 
Swing and a miss. Got him to chase the high fastball and Sauter's out on strikes. First strikeout for Owen Siebenek. And that sends Jacob Ricker to the plate. Ricker singled and scored and then walked. That one's upstairs. Well, Todd, if you're into high school softball, Thursday, Coldwater plays the number one team in the state in Minster, and that will air on Friday night on WOSN. That's a pretty big matchup. They'll, you'll, they'll see Madison Wendell, who is one of the best pitchers in the state, for Coldwater, and then against that Minster Wildcat team. 2-0 pitch here inside 3-0. We're assuming that Garrett Seawright is back from northern Michigan and his hockey duties to call <laughs> that game. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it's easy to get lost up there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Three balls and nothing. Strike called. Three and one to Ricker. 6-3, Grove at the lead. Oh, and Siebenek working from behind for the first time has battled back to push it to a full count. Garrett's from Rockford, Ohio, and I texted him. I had to be in Rockford for a grandson event on Saturday. I texted yeah. him and said, what, 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 what can I do? What are the tourist attractions? He said, well, the stoplight blinks. <laughs> <laughs> Payoff pitch, ball four. I thought he was going to say, well, come over to my house. That's really the only tourist attraction in town. No. Oh, Rockford. First walk for Siebenek. And brings up Trenton Winecoop. Of course, Minster baseball is pretty good, they too. They are, yeah. And, and Mac and, and baseball is really good at the top. Coldwater, Versailles, and Minster. And just pencil Minster track into being good, too. That's a yearly oh. event. Yes, it is. Slow roller to short, charging and making the play. That time is the shortstop, Collie. Well done on that weak ground ball past the mound for out number two. Ricker scoots over to second. And Everett Paldi will step in with a chance to drive in a run or two, a run here. Last time up, he was in an RBI shot with two outs and he popped up to end the inning. He walked and scored in the first. Like how Collie played that ball. It's kind of a slow hit ball, came charging in, got it, made a good throw. Strike called on the outside corner to Paldi. Had a chance to talk to Dad before the game, That's didn't right. we? Scott Pauldy's here in the crowd tonight, as you would expect. Oh, one pitch, driven to center. Lozier, though, appears to have it measured, and he does. And that's one thing you get in center field with Kaleida. That center fielder, Lozier, knows how to play the position. So a walk with one out leads to nothing for Grove. On to the bottom of the fourth on the fa least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. It is Columbus Grove six and Kaleida three. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN. Shortstop Nathan Colley will lead it off for Kaleida here in the fourth inning. Cats trail the dogs six to three. Columbus Grove and Kaleida, Putnam County League Baseball here on WOSN. Through three innings, Brady Basinger from 53 pitches, 33 of them for strikes. That one's inside from Basinger to Colley. He grounded out to first, his only time up. 1-0 pitch. Popped up to second, under it, and grabbing it is Ricker at number one. Got it on the end of the bat, couldn't get any power on it. Bubba Smith back in the box. He singled and scored in the first, had a stolen base. He walked in the second. Look at uh, Kaleida, some of the frustrating losses or games that they led. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. They led Elida 2-0 through five before falling there. They led Crestview five to nothing before a couple of big innings by Crestview, aided by miscues, led to the loss. Just this past Saturday, Tenora scored three in the sixth to pull out an eight-six win. Nothing at one to Smith. There's a roller past the mound to shortstop. There's Hopkins. There's a throw, and it's close. But Smith is out. Two up, two down, and could we? Might we have our first one, two, three inning? You mentioned the Crestview Knights. They're 10 and 1, 5 and 0 oh in the Northwest Conference. 
talked about Lipsick earlier. They're 13 and one. They're five and zero in the Northwest Conference. And then you got uh, Lincoln View. Lincoln View is still undefeated yeah. in conference. Conference 11 and four. Groves hanging in there three and three. There's a hit. Lozier says no to that one two three inning with a ball served out into right center field. A two out knock. That is hit number four for the Cats. And Adam Buckrath will bat with two down. Lozier has half of those hits. And yeah, the infield the RBI hit in that second inning when he made a head first slide in the first. Initially was called out, but the umpires conferred and apparently ruled the first baseman did not actually touch the bag. There's a strike called. Good slow breaking ball from Bracinger. Bacher out the walk, reached on an error. He's 0 for 1. 6-3, Columbus Grove. There's a quick pitch, runner's going, throw is tailing off toward the runner and diving in safely is Caden Lozier. Three for three on the season now, stolen bases for Lozier. Got himself in scoring position. Obviously, Basinger was aware of the possibility of running. He tried the quick pitch there, but Lozier steals it anyway. One ball, one strike to Bachrath. RBI chance here now with two outs. Good pitch there, one and two. Fastball at the knees. And a pitcher's pitch there at the knees inside corner. One ball, two strikes to Bachrath. Swing and a miss. And boy, that was a nasty breaking ball there. Brady Basinger reaches deep into his repertoire for that off-speed pitch to end the inning and end a collide of threat. No runs on a hit. No errors, one left. Through four on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, it is Columbus Grove 6, Collide of 3 on WOSN. Four innings in the books here at Kaleida, Columbus Grove 6, and the Wildcats 3. On the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, Todd Walker and Mark Schein with you. As Columbus Grove comes to bat in the fifth, hitters eight, nine, and one do up in Coach Braden Sauter's lineup. This is Carter Flores, the third baseman. Swing and a miss to start things off. A reminder, you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 a month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. You can do that anytime. One ball, one strike. It's Ro Roku. Roku. Okay, because the girls make fun of me at the station. I never know how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Abby Beck's here. She's one of them. <laughs> Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. It's Roku. Ru I don't know what it was. They, they, they always make fun of me because I pronounced wrong. I'm glad you had to read. Right? <laughs> <laughs> one ball, two strikes to Carter Flores outside. 2-2. Two -two. See, yes. that 15 strikes and 22 pitches in the two innings he's pitched so far. Very effective. Yeah, so when Siebenek is coming and settled things down for sure from the Kaleida perspective. Here's a roller to short. Collie makes the play. One out. Now Devin Bart will be the batter. Bart, a two-run single and hit by a pitch. Right fielder, number nine hitter in this Columbus Grove lineup. Grove has seven hits on the evening. Kaleida has four. Fly ball, short right field. Siebenek's there. And Jacob makes the play for out number two. Don't say it. Not gonna. <laughs> Back to the top of the lineup, Brady Basinger. The pitcher does not bat him as he throws him, as Marty Ban Marty. Brenneman used to say, he throws left, he bats right. That one got in on his fist, he fouled it back. Was today you had the, the, the question about the three left-handed uh, pitchers with more than 300? No, but that was one of my recent trivia questions. I did not realize that Rolvis Chapman had 300 saves. Yeah, he's got 322, I think the I number I did not is. realize that. Swing and a miss, now it's 0-2. Sebenek coming to the plate. 
Strike yeah. three called, and Basinger's out shopping, and there it is, our first one, two, three inning of the evening. That'll bring up Kaleida to bat in the bottom of the fifth. It's still Columbus Grove six, Kaleida three on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard on WOSN. Kaleida coming to bat here in the fifth inning. The Bulldogs infield meets on the mound and splits up as Brady Basinger begins this fifth inning of work. Jacob Siebenek will lead it off for Kaleida. Grove scored six in the first. Kaleida scored one. The Cats added two in the second. Nothing sense for either team. That one is shot the other way, foul by Jacob Siebenek, who's got an RBI ground out and a fly out on his batting ledger. Really good fourth inning for Brady Basinger. Er, nine pitches, six of them for strikes. He's thrown 62 pitches, 39 of them for strikes in the game. Oh, one pitch. Foul back. Siebenek with a big play in this game defensively in the second inning. He threw out Kyle Hopkins trying to go first to third on a hit to right. And eventually Grove loaded the bases after that. So that was a run saving play. Oh and two. Basinger blows him away with the fastball high and away. And that is a strikeout for Basinger his fifth. Seems like Brady Basinger is kind of finding the groove here. Mark. Yeah I would agree with that. That, I mean, that was just a pitch efficient three, three pitches. Yeah. Got, got the strikeout, kind of a weak foul ball work, worked in there. Well, as they say, good morning, good afternoon, a good night. This time, very efficient. One pitch, roller to second, two out. So Brady Basinger starting to settle in. And that's bad news for Kaleida. Now Griffin Clousing will try to get something going with two outs as the sun starts to set behind the grandstand here at Holy Name Ballpark. You can see the shadow starting to encroach from behind the plate. Of course, the building over the left field wall, Mark, did your team ever play in there? The old palace? No, I did not play in there. No, I officiated in there some, a yeah. few times after I got uh, out of my coaching career. One ball and nothing to Griffin Clousing. That kind of shows you the importance of basketball in this community because they have two really nice. Yeah, they got two gyms you could play varsity basketball. Yeah. In. Two balls, no strikes. I played a game in there. 80 to 42, Kaleida won. I didn't play for Kaleida, by the way. <laughs> Three and oh. <laughs> Uh, they you were had, a Mustang, weren't you? Yeah, they had too many vorsts and uh, some clousings and some quarter cracks or something. And Coach K coaching that? Hell yeah. Yeah. All we had was me and some other guys. Here's a walk. The clousing brings up Jack Stegschulte. Third walk. So just as we were bragging up Basinger about getting into the groove, yeah. he issues a quick walk to clousing. Jack Steck, Schulte, the DH now, hit by a pitch, scored a run, and struck out. Chopper passed him out right side, second baseman, let it get to him and eat him up, and that's going to extend the inning. So, error on the second baseman, Ricker. You're not, you're not supposed to get a, an off hop like that when you have the dirt and grass come together sometimes you get a hop like that. That right. kind of had some overspin on it. It took kind of an odd hop. Uh, on this type of turf field, that's, that usually doesn't happen. Yeah, I just think it was really topped off the bat. Mm -hmm. Just made it a little bit tricky. So here's Owen Siebenek, the pitcher. We'll try to extend this two-out rally. 6-3 Grove leads. There's a ball down and in. One ball, no strikes. Brady Basinger trying to work out of this two-out jam. Walking an error. Swing and a miss. And actually, I should correct myself. Siebenek is not in there. This is Hoffman back batting. As oh. you can uh, re-enter. So let me correct that. It's Jackson Hoffman batting. One ball, one strike. Does that mean we need to get another pitcher then, right? Siebenek cannot come back after he's... Actually, I think he can, can return come back pitch. Part time? Yes. Okay. Two balls, one strike. 6-3 Grove, big spot here for 
Hoffman. Shoots it the other way, and that will fall for a hit. Rounding third, Klausing. He will score, and it's 6-4, Columbus Grove. And now runners on the corner, so Hoffman knocks in a run with that single down the right field line. And all this with two outs, an unearned run. Situational hitting, just poked it out over the right, the uh, first baseman's head, and then just inside the foul line. We're going to pop for just a mound. Might it be time for a pitching change here? Certainly not a bad effort by right. Basinger. He had two outs and nobody on. The, the walk and error and not really a hard hit ball there, but he's facing the nine batter Collie here. He has thrown 75 pitches in the game. Now, Coach Sauter told me that they'd like to turn to Kyle Hopkins late in the game if it's a situation where they need to. He has just come back to pitching here this past week and they think he can be ready to be really dialed in by tournament time, but they're not going to turn to him yet. They're going to ride the rails with the incumbent. And that would be Brady Basinger. Nathan Colley has grounded to first and popped out to second. 6-4 now. Columbus Grove leads. Runners on the corners. Two outs. And there's the throw to first. Collie is the number nine hitter. Hoffman's one for two in stolen bases on the season. Yeah, might you try and send the runner here to try and cause a miscue defensively? They do not. Swing and a miss by Collie. Really looked like he tried to take that outside pitch the other way. He just couldn't climb the ladder to get to it. It was up in the zone. Nothing in one on the catch shortstop. Now the runner takes off. They do bait the defense, but Columbus Grove just eats it. We made a wise move to step back. Yep. But that does put runners on second and third. It makes the defensive play much tougher. You don't have a force out. Got to get the out at first. 0-1. Again, Kali raises up to try and get to that high pitch. He fouls it off. Of course, the other part of that is Todd, a hit of any distance, ties this one up. Yes. Oh, yeah, from the offensive perspective, you definitely want to be running there, force them to throw you out if they can. Most times they won't even try, which is what happened. So nothing in two to Kali, basing her pitches. Missed to that off speed. That one just kind of spun, didn't have any break to it. Still ahead in the count is Basinger. The freshman left-hander, one-two pitch. Chopper right back to him. Basinger runs toward first, throws to first, and got him to extricate himself from further damage. However, Kaleida with a run, just one hit, plus a walk and an error, two men left. After five here at Holy Name Ballpark, it is Columbus Grove six. Collide up four on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard on WOSN. New pitcher on for Kaleida as we head to the sixth inning on the Lee's Famous uh, Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Columbus Grove leads six to four. This is Griffin Klausing coming out of the bullpen. Well, actually, he came over from first base to take over. The sophomore is on the mound now in the sixth for Kaleida. He's 16 and two-thirds innings on the mound this year's records. 0 and 4. His ERA is 4.2. He goes 16 and two-thirds innings. He's given up 14 hits. He's walked nine, but struck out 23 batters in 16 and two-thirds innings. How about Owen Siebenek's line? Three innings, no hits, no runs, one walk. He struck out two. Kyle Hopkins leads off the sixth for Grove, and he hits it to third foul. Well, a nice decision there by the third baseman, Bockrath. He was going to try and backhand that and then said, you know, if I let this go, it's probably going to be foul, and it was. You mentioned Jackson Hoffman came in to, to hit last inning or returned to the lineup to hit. He's not first base. Right, and let me clarify, Owen Siebenek could not come back in a yep. pinch when he was pinch, pinch hit for. I misspoke on that earlier because he was the relief pitcher. 
he can't re-enter after he's been put in in relief. So that nuance was misrepresented by me, but we got it all straight now. Indeed, at first base now is Jackson Hoffman. One ball, one strike. Clousing delivers and misses. Two and one to Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins 0 for 2 officially. He was hit by a pitch in the second inning. He was thrown out at third, trying to go first to third. A great play by Siebenek in the outfield. Here's a roller toward the hole between third and short. Shortstop fields it, but no play at first. And an infield hit for Hopkins. Colley made the play and then just kind of spiked it in the turf. Just to make sure he didn't throw it away. So a leadoff hit for Columbus Grove by shortstop Kyle Hopkins. And now Caleb Davis will bait. Davis will step in. That's the first leadoff hit for Columbus Grove. Ball outside. They've had the leadoff man on. Hit by pitch twice. And that's the first leadoff hit. Davis, two singles and a fly out. He has scored a run. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Really tardy on that swing. 6-4, Columbus Grove leads. We are in the sixth inning on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Hopkins is 10 for 11 with a stolen base opportunity. He's got a good lead. Not going, and that one is fisted toward first. Huffman will wheel the second, and no, safe. I'm not sure if that clipped the base runner or not, but that's going to be an error on the first baseman there. Looked like it either clipped the runner or just yeah. the runner shielded the fielder, but ultimately an error on the throw and Davis reaches on the fielder's choice so first and second nobody out for Evan Sauter of course you could give it E6 if you thought he should have caught it but I thought I thought it was on the throw yep Sauter squares to bunt takes ball one well now as they say the proverbial wheels are turning here how do you defend the bunt do you keep the bunt on Sauter has two hits today, plus a strikeout. He has a successful sacrifice on the season. Wiggle in the bat, squares the bunt, gets it That's down. Uh-oh. Third base side pitcher, bare hand, gun to first, late safe. Really good bunt. He right couldn't do it line. any better. Yep. Pitcher had to go a long way to get to it. So that'll load the bases for Jacob Ricker. Sophomore second baseman. He has singled, walked, and walked. Coach Souter's coming down the line. And he wants to make sure that his sophomore second baseman knows where oh, he's going to have a pinch runner or something. He's going to the home plate umpire. All right. Let's see what we get here. Emerging from the Grove dugout is sophomore Michael King. He is going to second base to run for catcher Caleb Davis. Grove has not scored since the opening inning. A chance to break this one wide open. And yeah, Coach Sauter knows how big that extra run is at second base and get some better foot speed out there. Kalida will draw the infield in. Bases loaded, nobody out. Chopper, left side. Third baseman can't make the play, and a run scores. For another misplay by Kaleida. That error scores a runner from third, and it's now 7-4. to four. Columbus Grove with their first run since that six-run first inning. And right there, Bachrath just got kind of caught in between what he wanted to do and how fast he had to do it. He wanted to get the play at the plate and try to knock off that lead runner, keep him from scoring, but just wasn't able to field the ball cleanly. Certainly had time to do it if he had made the play. So here's Weinkoop. Foul ball. Infield remains in. Bases remain loaded. 
And now he run in with nobody out. White comes over three today. Scored a run because he was on by error. Yeah, that error led to six unearned runs in the first for Columbus Grove. Oh, one pitch, he fights it off back to the mound. They get the out at home, or do they? Yes. Wow. He dropped it, caught it on the bounce just in time for the force out. Boy, catcher Ethan Weary, I think, had a mind to let that fly to another base and try to get the out. So just enough to get the force out on the play one to two. Sauter moves up to third, Ricker at second, and now Weinkoop at first, Everett Palti at the bat. Palti's had ducks on the pond the last two times up, has been unable to deliver. A chance to change that here. Infield in still with one out. That ball bounces in. Knocked down by Weary, third base side. The runners will hold. Good job of Weary to keep that ball in front of him. That goes back to the screen. It's a run. One ball and nothing. The Palti inside corner, strike one. Palti backed away from it, but it caught the corner. One ball, one strike on the Grove first baseman. Squares to bump, popped it up, and it lands foul. Diving attempt made by Ethan Weary, the catcher, but he couldn't come up with it. You know, we talked about the youth of this Kaleida team. Of all the guys that have played in this game, there's only one senior for them. That's Ethan Weary. And that's sophomore, freshman, and a junior, but mostly sophomores out there. Nice to have a senior catcher. Oh, Somebody indeed. who's been through all this, knows how to lead, understands all the situations. One and two, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Boy, Klausing said, come get you some, and blows it half Paldi for a big second out. Bases remain loaded, but now two outs for Carter Flores. Check it. This is not Flores. This is Riley Sauter. The pitch. Inside corner strike. Riley Sauter, big RBI chance here for the junior. Down a strike, the base is loaded, two outs. Fastball right there for strike two. Most uh, his speed he's had on the pitch in this inning. Well, that fastball to Palti and that one were very well placed and thrown hard. Now one strike away is Klausing from limiting this to a one-run inning. And he does. A swing and a miss by Sauter ends the inning. However, Columbus Grove gets a big insurance run here in the sixth inning. They did it on a couple of hits and a couple of Kaleida errors. They leave the bases loaded. On to the bottom of the sixth on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. It is now Columbus Grove 7 and Kaleida 4 on the, on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Kaleida down seven to four as they come to bat here in the sixth inning. Off-speed pitch down for ball one to Bubba Smith. Brady Basinger on for his sixth inning of work. His team tapped on a run in the top of the inning. That one hit the plate, bounces through. Through five innings, 79 pitches, 50 of them for strikes. Brady. Got it out of a jam last inning, although he did allow one run. Could have been a lot worse. 2-0 pitch. Another one bounces. So three balls and no strikes to Bubba Smith. It was certainly a guy that Kaleida counts on to start rallies, and he's a pitch away from an inning opening walk. And he is on after that one missed inside. For... 
Basinger, his fourth walk. He has struck out five. He has hit a batter. Second time today, Smith has began an inning by getting on base. Lozier, two for three with a strikeout, infield hit RBI, and another single. There's a the ball up over the head of the left-hand mm. batter. And Basinger struggling to begin the six, five straight out of the zone. He's labored a bit. His motion is not as fluid as it was earlier in the game. 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss by Lozier. High fastball. Bubba Smith now has been on three times tonight in four plate appearances. Two walks and a single. Certainly a threat to steal down there at first base. And that is a self-defense <laughs> bunt by Lozier as that ball was up at his face. And really tough break there for yeah. Kaleida. That's nowhere near being a strike, but he just simply couldn't get out of the way. Almost out of reflex, he put the bat on the ball. And he's down one ball, two strikes. Bubba Smith, his steal earlier, his ninth of the year in 10 tries. That one missed off the outside edge, two and two. 7-4, Grove with the advantage on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard in the bottom of the sixth. Off speed and a swing and a miss by Lozier. Tried to hold up a kind of double clutch on his swing, but come up empty. Strikeout number six for Basinger. Comes Coach Sauter with a mound. And like I said, he told me in the pregame that it could go to Hopkins late in the game for an inning, maybe a little more, and they're five outs away from the victory here. He has thrown 88 pitches with one out here in the sixth. Batter upcoming is Adam Bachrath, the third baseman. Adam is a freshman. You look at this Kaleida lineup, junior, sophomore, freshman, junior, senior, sophomore, junior, sophomore, sophomore, sophomore. Speaks to the youthfulness of this team and why they've had a number of games where they've been very competitive or felt like they could have or should have won, but didn't. Look, look at today. They were down 6-0 right out of the shoot. Right. They got it back to 6-4. Now they're looking at a 7-4 deficit, but they have hung in there after that opening inning. Adam Bachrath, one out, runner at first. Grove with that three-run lead. Pitches outside. Of course, these teams are old rivals. I looked up the, uh, the record book. 46 wins for Kaleida, 44 for Columbus Grove all time. Strike call, good pitch. One ball, one strike. These teams have either won or shared amongst themselves each of the last seven Putnam County League titles. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Another good off-speed pitch. The top we talk about it in a lot of sports, uh, men's and women's, but uh, Columbus Grove trying to compete in two leagues at the same time and you know, have enough pitching in, in baseball and so on. It's so difficult. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. High fastball, and Bachrath could not catch up to it. Seventh strikeout for Basinger. And now Jacob Siebenek steps in with two outs and a runner at first. Does it seem like he got away from his breaking ball a little bit? He's gone to, to more of the fastball in this inning? And maybe that's what Coach Sauter was reminding him of when he went to the mound. Now well, there's an off-speed pitch inside to Siebenek. Kaleida and Columbus Grove shared the Putnam County League title in 2019. Grove won it outright in 2022. Kaleida won it outright last year. There's a the ball that hit the batter. Yep. As that dove down and in. So that is a second base runner in the inning. Second hit batter of the game by Basinger. And Ethan Weary bats a two on and two out. For Kaleida, of course, Coach Ernsberger, this is his fourth season. 
They won the PCL his first year and again last year. Coach Joe Recker's last four years, they won four straight PCL titles, losing only two games. They went 26 and two over those four years. Ball inside, one ball and nothing to Ethan Weary. Weary, strikeout, reached on an error, ground out. 7-4 Grove, bottom of the sixth, two on and two out. Chopper foul at the plate. Columbus Grove has seven runs, but they have left 10 runners on base in this game. One ball, one strike. Kaleida's left eight through five innings. Fastball away, two and one. So both teams have left some opportunities out there. 7-4 Grove. Basinger comes set, the 2-1, foul ball. In the opening two innings, Brady Basinger threw 19 pitches in each inning. That was his 19th pitch of this inning, so did pretty well in innings three, four, and five, but his numbers climbed a bit here in this inning. Two balls, two strikes to Weary. Basinger will try to end the inning right here. And he does. Yeah, yes. Strike three call. Struck out the side. He struck out Lozier, Bachrath, and Weary. He walked a man and hit a man, but ultimately a zero on the board for Kaleida in the sixth. On to the seventh on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Columbus Grove seven and Kaleida four on WOSN. On to the seventh inning here in Kaleida. Columbus Grove seven and Kaleida four. On the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, Todd Walker and Mark Shine here with you. Grove coming to bat for what they certainly hope will be the final time. Don't forget, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken updates you with all the area scores with the WOSN Scores app. Download the free app from the Android or Apple stores or go to WOSN.TV and you can keep up to date on all the scores and all the sports with that WOSN app. On for a second inning of relief work is Griffin Clousing. And he gets a foul tip strike. Clousing through 21 pitches, 15 of them for strikes in his first inning of work. Gave up an unearned run. A one pitch. Wave and a miss by Devin Barnt, who's leading off the eighth for Columbus Grove. Kaleida has been their own worst enemy with four errors leading to all these runs unearned. Clousing holds the ball high near his chin from his set and fires away and misfires there as that one skips to the backstop. One ball, two strikes. Bart has a two-run single. He was hit by a pitch and he's flown out. So one for two. One ball, two-strike pitch. High in the air, right side on the infield. Second baseman is there, and Smith puts it away, round number one. So certainly, if you're Griffin Clousing, you just want to hold this here. It's already a three run deficit. Give your team a better chance for a seventh inning comeback. Here's Brady Basinger, he's 0 for 4. Off-speed strike. Basinger does have a stolen base as he reached on a fielder's choice in the third. Does not have a hit. Actually struck out twice today. Yep. A couple of Ks. He's recorded nine on the mound. That was one off when we were talking last inning. He actually has nine strikeouts for striking out three in the sixth inning. One ball, one strike to Basinger. There's a big hack, one and two. 
Basinger trying to start a one out rally here in the seventh inning and we'll see if he returns to the mound to try to pitch the complete game. He's thrown 99 pitches through six innings. One two pitch. That one is chopped foul wide of third. Talked about the tournament draw coming up this week and the section will begin the week of May 11th. Let's Grove will be in the Elida sectional district and then they play regional will be at Patrick Henry. That's in division three. One and two pitch. Climbs the ladder and strikes him out. Basinger three strikeouts. At the dish. Third strikeout recorded by Griffin Klausing and Kyle Hopkins bats with two outs and nobody on. Kaleida is in Division Four and they will be in the Patrick Henry District and then they will move to the Elida Regional, at least the winners of that district do. Hopkins first pitch, swing and a miss. Kyle has uh, popped out, hit by a pitch, fly out, single. He has scored a run, one for three. 7-4 Grove with the lead here in the seventh. Both teams one and two in the PCL coming into today's action. Oh, one pitch. Off speed bounces in there. He's got that big dramatic motion on his changeup. So you think it's really coming with a lot of heat to it, but he's taking there something off of it. One one. Way upstairs, two and one. Now Hopkins steps out. Steps back in. Two balls and a strike to the Grove shortstop. And balls off the inside corner, three and one. I'll be at UNOH tomorrow helping them broadcast the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference Tournament. UNOH won the regular season and already has earned a berth in the NAIA National Tournament because of that. So they fly ball to right center and the right fielder, Jacob Siebenek, ranging to his right, picks it off for out number three. So a one, two, three, seventh turned in by Griffin Klausing. Kaleida has got work to do in the bottom of the seventh. It is Columbus Grove, seven, Kaleida, four. Wildcats coming up for their possible final at bat. That's a three-run deficit on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard on WOSN. Bottom of the seventh on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Kaleida looking to come back and either walk off of the win or extend the game. And they'll face a new pitcher. Kyle Hopkins comes in from shortstop to the mound. Kyle Hopkins, 13 in the third innings this season, has given up 17 hits. His ERA is 5.78. In those uh, 13 in the third innings, though, he struck out 16, and he has uh, walked eight. Uh, he missed some time with some shoulder issues. He just pitched the other day a, a strong inning, and Coach Sauter feels he's getting closer to full strength, but that one was behind the batter on his first pitch, and that one bounces in, so 2-0 to Griffin Klausing. Pitching lineup, Brady Basinger, six innings, five hits, four runs, two earned. He walked four, he struck out nine, he hit two batters. There's a strike in the outside corner. Through 99 pitches, 50 of them were for strikes. Griffin Klausing, the batter, 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. 2-1 pitch. Ball three. Klausing started the game at first base. He's now pitching. Speaking of that, former pitcher Brady Basinger now playing first for Columbus Grove. Former first baseman Everett Palti moved to shortstop. And now we've got a full count. 7-4 Columbus Grove. Last go round for Kaleida. They need at least three to extend the game here. Hopkins, payoff pitch. Not close. Walked in. This is a save situation, although the by the slimmest of margins, the three-run lead as Hopkins enters the game. 
And Jack Stecksholdy enters the batter's box. Jack hit by a pitch and scored in the second, struck out in the third, reached on an error in the fifth. Chopper toward third. And sitting back and misplaying it is Sauter. Throw to first, not in time. So the fifth error of the game on Columbus Grove makes it first and second, but nobody out. Clyde has committed four errors. That's why of the 11 runs scored, only two are earned in this game between the teams. Kaleida with a runner coming in at first base. That is Logan Kerner. And you can see the play at third. He let the ball kind of play him. He started in and got to the cut of the grass or where the cut would be and then kind of hesitated a moment. Put two runners on. And now first baseman Jackson Hoffman will bat. He has also pitched in this game. He was the starting pitcher. First and second, nobody out. Fastball swinging a foul tip strike. Looks like Hopkins maybe will get away from throwing the off speed now and just go with old number one. He's had trouble with the breaking ball here in this inning. And as you and said, tried that, that and missed. Yeah, missed it. Missed it badly. Hoffman. Singled and scored in the second, singled in a run in the fifth. Also had a stolen base, so he's two for two. One ball, one strike. Another breaking ball missed badly again, two and one. Runner at first is Logan Kerner running for Jack Stecksholdy. Griffin Clousing is at second. Two one pitch. Swing and a miss. 2 2. Fastball. Just had trouble getting his breaking ball to in the zone. Two balls, two strikes, two men on. There's a slow roller to third. Sauter charges and has to make a tough throw, and he got him. Boy, tough throw, but well done there by the third baseman, Riley Sauter. That Runners was a ball he played third. well, Todd. He, he did. even got that one and put some mustard on the throw. It was not that hard hit. That uh, was not hit hard enough to get the force at third because he had to come in front of the bag and make the throw on the run. So Nathan Colley in the box with runners at second and third, now one out. Fouls it back. Colley, as Hoffman, represents the tying run. He is 0 for 3. He's grounded to first base twice. He's popped up. So he's had a rough day at the plate against Basinger, but now facing Hopkins. A one pitch. Outside corner, strike two with a fastball. Good pitch. Yeah, not much you could do with it as nope. a hitter, that's for sure. Hopkins, long pause. Here he comes at the 0-2. Strike that three call, yes, and that's the best breaking ball he's thrown. Uh -huh. And he froze Collie, who's out shopping, out number two. And Bubba Smith. I think fair to say Kaleida's best player is at the dish to try to extend the game. He's had a hit and two walks and four plate appearances. He might have struggled with that breaking ball before that last one, but that was pretty. Yes, it was. Bubba Smith, two on, two out. 7-4 Columbus Grove, collided down to their final out. That one's way upstairs with another off speed. Came back with that pitch and he just got uh, the out with Collie, but that one left high. Here's the 1-0. Slow roller left side, Riley Sauter, tough play, and he's not even gonna throw it. Smith is gonna beat that. And that's an RBI infield single. And it's seven to five. That was a really wise play, I thought. Uh, he, he's not going to get the runner at first. No. Might as well just keep it. Yeah, see if you can find the runner too far around third base. Ultimately, that did not happen. Well, the only other thing that could happen is you could, you know, pitch it in the dirt over there or something to oh, give yeah. up a run. You might as well just hang on to the ball. No question about it. 
So we'll get a mound confab here. As now the winning run is at the plate in the person of Caden Lozier. Well, the, the part of this discussion is what do you do with the runner on first base who's eight for nine and stolen bases on the season, has one today, makes him nine for 10. If he gets to second, then you get a long hit of any type and the game is tied. So how do you play him? Well, clearly Bubba Smith's gonna be trying to advance to second. And clearly Columbus Grove would like to try to prevent that, but the other part of this is, if you're talking to pitcher Kyle Hopkins, that guy at the plate is really all that matters. Get that out, and this game belongs to the Bulldogs. For the first time today, Lozier's not facing a left-handed pitcher. He had two hits and four trips against Basinger, the lefty-lefty matchup, and takes ball one there. You know, what you thought might have been an advantage for a left-handed pitcher did not turn out that way today. Lozier trying to extend the game. First and third, two out. Smith running from first and a hit batter. And Adam Bachrath will bat. So Hopkins has come in. He has walked a man. He's hit a man. He's given up an infield hit. Plus they have an error. Bachrath has struggled today. He's 0 for 4 and he struck out twice. A great position to redeem himself. Bachrath awaits the pitch. Stayed inside. Grove seven. Kaleida five. But the Cats have the bases loaded with two outs. Bachrath awaiting the 1 0. There's a slow one for a strike. Dogs lead by two. Kyle Hopkins trying to close it out. Kaleida not going easily. 1-1 one, one pitch. Missed. 2-1. Two one. Runner at third is Logan Kerner. Runner at second is Bubba Smith. Runner at first is Caden Lozier. 2-1 pitch. Popped up short right field. Who wants it? Second baseman, right fielder collide, but the second baseman, Ricker, hangs on. And that will end the ball game with Columbus Grove posting the 7-5 victory. Kaleida gets a run in the seventh. They did it with a walk, an error, a hit, and a hit batter. They leave the bases loaded. And the final score is 7-5 in favor of the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Totals in the game here for Columbus Grove. Seven runs, nine hits, five errors. They leave 10 men on base. For Kaleida, five runs, six hits, four errors. They leave 13 men on base. Brady Basinger pitched the first six innings for Columbus Grove. He gets the win. Kyle Hopkins got in some trouble in the seventh, but ultimately allowed only one run. He gets the save. Jackson Hoffman takes the loss for Kaleida. And Mark, the first inning told the story. Columbus Grove scored six unearned runs. They had five hits with two key errors by Kaleida. Grove maximized that inning and never trailed. Well, you know, he came right out. He got the first two outs in the first yeah. inning. You know, it, it, it looks like he's going to cruise to the first inning. He can get three consecutive hits. They all went to the opposite field. Then the air started to occur, and a walk occurred in there, and it just got away from him with those six runs. But congratulations to Collider. They continued to battle back into the baseball game. They just give up at that particular point, continued to compete. Columbus Grove, though, was going to get a victory today and walk out here with a PCL win. No doubt about it. With the win, Columbus Grove improves to six, uh, seven and nine on the season, two and two in the Putnam County League. Collider drops to four and 11 and one and three in the PCL. So that's going to do it from here at St. Michael Holy Name Ballpark in Kaleida. Final score once again on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard in this Putnam County League matchup. Columbus Grove 7 and Kaleida 5. For my partner Mark Shine, this is Todd Walker saying goodnight from Kaleida.